Good morning and many blessings here from Riku P. Blackheart. And yet again, it's time for the Sunday Detox. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard me say it one time too many this month, happy Pride Month from the unapologetically pansexual neighborhood friendly witch, Riku. Welcome again. And today we still have Zeb with us on the show. And we are going to continue talking about the LTPT community. Guys, Zeb, how you feeling today? I am all right. Not as bubbly as me, right? Uh, <laughs> no, I, w- I would have to be carbonated to be that bubbly. Oh, so are you saying I'm carbonated? Uh, I'm saying if you pop your top, uh, I would not be surprised at whatever would happen. <laughs> Well, I understand, I understand, but let's get down to the nitty, nitty gritty. We're going to go ahead and talk today on a subject that a few people have definitely, definitely, definitely have been questioning a little bit more into depth. Let's, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk transgendered and rights. Oh, in, in light of Father's Day? Especially in light of Father's Day. We have a lot of people. I have a lot of females who are, well, they're no longer females. They are they are definitely now male. Um, and they are fathers. Let's talk about it. In light of Father's Day, let's talk about those who are father figures who were not born male originally but now they identify as male or they may be a lesbian couple where they are they are the 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 dom or they're the stem and they are technically the father in a relationship i know a lot of people are on the fence when it comes down to that especially when it comes to mother's day and father's day and you got a lot of transgender people who are parents where do they fit in when it comes to these days, these opportunities to sit down and actually talk and have celebrations of them doing the right thing as a parent? Yeah. Honestly, as a straight cisgender man who is also a biological father of two children who is a stepfather uh, who, or who acted as a stepfather to more than one child like just kind of being the male role model and secondary uh, male influence in a child's life it's it's being a parent is tricky enough and it's hard enough but when you add in all of the other stuff that comes with it you kind of start to see a picture develop of what what your parentage means to the child that's receiving it. Um, there was constantly pushback uh, when it came to my former partner's son because I, you know, the whole "you're not my dad" type of behavior and it was easier for people to be supportive of me stepping in to take care of him because I was taking that job on myself. There's a lot of pushback, especially in the black community, when it comes to parenting a child that does not belong to you. There's a lot of pushback in the black community when it comes to LGBT parents at all. True. Um, they figure, of course, you have an agenda. So if you are a gay man and you have a child, oh, you're going to teach that kid to be gay if they're a boy, or you're going to teach them to be a lesbian if they're a girl, or you're not going to be able to show them how to be a real man. And honestly, we all had a very rigid idea growing up in the 70s, 80s, and even potentially the early 90s about what being a man was these ideal monoliths when it came to masculinity being like 
Arnold Schwarzenegger was a manly man, and John Wayne is a man's man, and you know, all all of these things. But masculinity does not necessarily make a man. No, you don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to be good at sports. You don't have to be stoic. All of these things are just traditional traits. So when a man is kind, when a man is artistic, when a man is open or gentle or forthcoming, all of these qualities are nurturing abilities, which typically people pawn off on women. But and men are capable of that too. That is something I, I, I feel as though society has put that stigma on men that they have to be this way. So what is that to say about women who don't have those characteristics, who don't have the traditional sense of being a woman and they have more of the tomboy ruggedness about them and they don't have this or they don't recognize themselves as being women and they, they, they decide to go into, they feel like they would never identify as a woman and they felt like they were born in the wrong body. Does that make them less of a man because they weren't born that way, but they have all those masculine traditions and traits? No, and honestly, that's that's part of the problem. Because in the straight community, it's an issue. When it comes to the gay community, it's an issue. When it comes to the trans community, it's an issue. And I think, honestly, growing up black, I personally never knew how to black correctly. You and me both. And I didn't know how to man correctly. I was being told specifically, like, I was told a lot of very toxic things. And I don't mean just, oh, the whole boys will be boys, bro mentality type of stuff. Or the aggressive men only show, you know, their emotions if someone dies and it's a single tear. Not just that stuff. There's things about kindness, about support. If you see someone fall, good. They learned. They learned from hurting themselves. Don't help them up. Don't be supportive. You know, let them lay there. Let them feel that failure. And that type of thing, when you try to apply it to raising children, or that whole just throw them in the pool, they'll figure out how to swim, it, it's not very supportive. And it's, an, it's a negative. It is a definitive negative when you're dealing with it from either standpoint. If you have two women that are raising a child and they are being nurturing and supportive, oh, that's going to make him soft. He's going to be a wuss. Oh, that's going to make her a girly girl. Or, you know, she's never going to be prepared to be tough enough to, to operate in this world. And if you have two men and they're raising a child to be more masculine or more sports-centered, it does not help either because the idea is that this person is going to be excessively masculine or overly masculine, or they're going to be doing too much in one vein or another, and it's not necessary. I actually, I actually want to say on that particular note, as also coming from, you know, living from a black family and living in the black community, I've realized growing up, and I have a lot of friends, I have a lot of them who are transgender, a lot of female to male transgender friends who has had kids, birthed children, um, doesn't necessarily mean they conceived a child the natural way. They could have done IVF, but society looks at them in the wrong way because of the fact of being, oh, you've had a child and now you're a man. Something's wrong with it. I don't know if anybody remembers um, the, the transgendered, a uh, male that got pregnant years ago um, that was actually female to male, transgendered, and it was a huge scandal, to, like a whole news article, because it was technically in the eyes of society, there were two men, but one of them was technically originally born a female, still had all the female organs and everything, didn't fully go through all the surgeries, but ended up, ended up pregnant. Um... A lot of people to this day still has like bringing up articles like whatever happened to him and this, that, and the other, the man who got pregnant. There is a thing that people fail to realize that systematically, the only thing that's different between male and female is the fact of being, they have a penis, we have a uterus, 
And even then, if you look at how it looks in the diagram, it looks exactly the same, except yours is external, ours is internal. <laughs> and it's a, and then on top of that, you guys can produce milk just like we can. It's been scientifically proven that men can produce milk. Um, so when it comes down to the the lines of everything, what's to say if I decided to be a man tomorrow after the years of therapy and the years of talking to a therapist and then they finally agree, yep, she does not indeed, she does not agree with the sex she was born or she is not just, you know, non-binary, she's not gender fluid, she is straight up thinks she's a, she she feels she was born the wrong sex. And then I decide to get rid of everything and adopt a child. But I still want to date men. I get married to a man. And the society is going to look at it as, oh, there's two men raising a child. You must have adopted. Or it could be a child of my own from my past. But roll around the Father's Day. Do I deserve to have a Father's Day gift? Or what if I get with a female who already has a kid and I came in as a stepdad? Do I deserve a Father's Day gift because I took on that role? I raised most of my my brothers, my brother Zach and my brother Eric. I raised basically both of them for the most part. Except when it came down to Zach, Khadija was also there, my sister, as well as my parents. But being the oldest, I help mold my siblings to who they are now. So who's to say that I can't sit here and take care of my child if I decided to, it, that one day I'm not the right sex? What is that to say about women who are single mothers and they have little boys? Do they not deserve to be celebrated as mothers and fathers? Because there's a lot of single mothers out there talking about happy Father's Day to me because I've been doing it all by myself all these years. Yeah, that that is a whole other conversation, but... I personally I don't agree with it with with that specific aspect if you are a mother and you are an exceptional mother then no you don't need to be celebrated for Father's Day you don't need a Father's Day card if you're a father and there is no mother in the picture you don't need a Father's Day card and a Mother's Day card what I what I personally believe is this gender should not influence specifically whether or not father's day or mother's day applies to you there is what people would refer to when you're talking about nurturing and growth that's considered a maternal instinct when we're talking about paternal it's typically supposed to be, you know, biology. But if you're talking fraternal, like the, like a fraternity, it's a brotherhood. So, in my opinion, if you are the positive masculine driving force in a child's life, you don't necessarily need to be born with a penis. You don't necessarily need to have testicles. If you are the positive masculine force, in a child's life, whether you are the best friend of the mother or that uncle who comes in and is always there or the guy at the boys and girls club who, you know, make sure that you aren't getting bullied after school, whatever the case is, that, that, that masculine positive role model in your life, that person is who gets the Father's Day gift. The positive feminine force in your life is the person who gets the Mother's Day gift. And if the person that is providing this positive feminine energy is a man, and they identify as a man, then respect their pronoun if you know what that pronoun is. Now, when it comes to children giving gifts or drawing pictures or, or whatever else, they don't really see gender. All they see is, is presentation. And if a person is presenting masculine or presenting feminine, 
then unless they know what that entails, they might draw a picture or give you a present that is going more on what they're visually taking in. So if you identify as a male and you are wearing a dress and lipstick and whatever else it is, if Mother's Day rolls around and you've been good to this person and they give you a Mother's Day gift, it's not in an effort to offend if you identify as a male. It's more out of you being the loving, feminine, nurturing part of their life. And that I support wholeheartedly. If you are a single parent, and you are an exceptional mother, and there's no father in the picture, if you're twice the mother as everyone else, that's excellent. You No, you don't need to be celebrated as a father. Because you being a damn good mother is enough. It's more than enough. So, there are people who are compensating, but don't think because you're teaching a boy things he needs to know that that's a man's job. So you need to be celebrated for doing a man's job. It's not a man's job. It's not a woman's job. It's a parent's job. And unfortunately, there is no parent's day. But if a person is celebrating you... Well, there's a grandparent's day, but not a parent's day. They feel like having a mother's day and a father's day is enough. So the reason why I didn't want to speak up on mother's day is because technically I'm not considered a mother that I've had two miscarriages. Like, biology doesn't necessarily make you a mother or a father. Exactly. So, Mm -hmm. I mean... And giving birth to a child doesn't make you a mother or a father. Because a lot of people still don't... They don't blur the... They don't look at it... I hate... And it's, it's bad. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. But I see this so common with a lot of parents. Some, especially on the women's side because women are some of the most vindictive women like we are the most vindictive we break people each other down we feel like oh well you didn't do it this way or you don't take care of your skin like I do they're so quick to pass judgment that as a woman and I can tell you as a woman we can look at a transgendered female and look at them and feel like they're less of a woman because they weren't me- they weren't born a woman. We can look at a woman who adopted a child and say, well, you're not really a mother because you didn't carry this child. Or we can look at a situation of, oh, you had a C-section, so you never really delivered your child. When in all actuality, we find so many things as humans to nitpick on each other that we don't take a moment and realize that maybe the way that you're raising your child isn't the right way either. You're so quick to throw stones living in a glass house, but not see the big picture. What you do to raise your child, the only thing as a parent you're supposed to do is teach your child how to survive and not to be an asshole. Yeah, a lot of people fail on at least one of those two things, but I'm Uh, going to leave that where it is. But that's just it. And I mean, like, I know for me, at this rate of time in my life, I'm 29, and if I go back into the dating scene, finding me somebody who doesn't already have a child is going to be slim and none. I'm going to come into the picture as a stepmom. So on top of everything else, my next partner is fully aware if I ever have kids, it's going to be a very, very slim chance that I'm going to be hospitalized the entire time of the pregnancy. Because I am very high risk because of my my health issues. So I feel like at the end of the day, I am not going to judge any man or woman who is taking the role as a parent and doing the right thing as a parent. At the end of the day, I look at parent like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents Day, the same way I look at Valentine's Day. You should appreciate your parent for being on this earth every opportunity you have because at the end of the day if they taught you right from wrong they told you not they taught you how to survive how to balance a checkbook they were there for you they supported you they helped nurture build you and water your growth it does not matter their sexuality 
I could have had two mothers for everybody's knowledge and they would look at me and talk about why you so hard. Hell, my my cousin, she's born, she she you could tell she from you know, from Chicago, from the shy. I love my cousin, my A1 since day one, like my cousin Shady, my little big cousin. She, when you talk to her, you would think she is gay because of how she talks. She talks real hard and she talks like she has dude mentality, like straight up, I'm gonna say it, she has straight up man mentality a lot of the times. And you wanna know something though? Her daddy really wasn't a part of her life. Her mama basically raised her. Yes, yeah, she got a stepfather, but at the end of the day, the male role in her life was her stepfather. But other than that, she really didn't have a man raise her. You would yeah. never know. And her mom is the most feminine female in the world. But my cousin came out totally different. So for people who sit here and say, oh, two gay parents raising a child or two males raising a child, their child's gonna turn out gay. No, it is not about what the parents do because you cannot force anybody to be gay. You can't force nobody to change the way they feel either. The one thing a lot of people fail to realize is if you wanna go back into the whole back into the religious aspect of it where Eve ate the apple and gave them subconscious right and will to choose. That's exactly what it is. It's their will to choose their destiny. If me and you to get was to get together tomorrow, I'm aware of what I'm signing up for. You got two beautiful girls. I have means I'm gonna have a teenage daughter and I'm gonna have a girl who's in her preteens. Close to. Close to. Abby's not quite there yet. She's getting close to. Not quite. Close. But not quite yet. Which that girl got a personality on her. (laughs) Jesus Christ, you have no idea. And I know what I signed up for. But at the end of the day, I know if that's the case, I'm not gonna expect your children to sit here and give me a Mother's Day gift because I'm a woman and I've decided to take the role on as a stepmother. That doesn't change anything that they still have biological mothers and they might grow up to be tomboys. They might turn out to be, you know, gay. Yeah, I'm pansexual, but I'm never going to tell them, hey, look, because I'm gay, you need to be gay too. No, as a parent, we are going to let our children bloom and blossom into their own right, their own personalities. Their- we will. Exactly. And that's what I want this episode to be about is that trans people, just because of their sex, because they, they, they've realized that they were born the wrong sex. They, they didn't want that extra Y or X chromosome for whatever the reason, or they feel like something, the wires didn't get crossed right. That does not make them less of a good parent or a bad parent. If they want to be- Parenting has nothing to do with sex. With with your sex or your gender, really. Like this this is the part that's very hard because you have people people tend to ask me because I'm black, they ask, you know, hey, how do you feel about this particular thing, the issue that affects black people? It may be something that bothers me, it may be something that doesn't bother me. But that's my individual opinion. I'm not speaking for the international representation delegation for all African American people. Oh, because opinions are like assholes and everybody got them and they all, half of them stink. Pretty much. Like, and that's, that's the issue is like, I can't say, and just because a trans person can say, oh, you know, I love the idea of someone, you know, referring to me as their dad for Father's Day. And someone else can just be like, I find it personally disrespectful because I don't identify as a male and society should change to reflect that. So you're going to get differing opinions. Always. My my thing is, rather than it being, again, like a binary construct where they have to celebrate Father's Day or they have to celebrate Mother's Day, when I was a kid, and a lot of people don't know this, but if you can find a calendar from like the early 80s, there used to be Grandparents' Day. Oh, no, it's still recognized. 
It's just not a national holiday. Yeah, there used to be Parents' Day. There was a Parents' Day. There was a Kids' Day. There was Mother's Day, Father's Day, Parents' Day, Kids' Day, Grandparents' Day, Grandmother's Day, Grandfather's Day. And they were all separated. And for those of you who actually wanted to stay home from school or be off work, there used to be a Lincoln's birthday and Washington's birthday. So there were two separate President's Days, and you didn't have to go in on either. Yeah, my but, birthday? Woo, I would have been happy on the 22nd every fucking month. Absolutely. Every year. Like, for real. For real, for real. But, like, in an effort to kind of condense holidays and be more productive and, and streamline, you know, the social construct, we now have President's Day and we have Mother's Day, period, Father's Day, period. And since, you know, grandmothers and grandfathers were at some point fathers or mothers, they just get grandfathered in, no pun intended, into the whole Father's Day, Mother's Day thing. Mm-hmm. But all of that condensing things, there was, in fact, a Parents' Day. And if you are a trans parent, my recommendation is you find out when Parents' Day is, and if you want your kids to just celebrate that particular day to honor you as either a trans or a non-binary person or a person who is gender fluid, and you want that day to be recognized as just a parent, not a mother figure, not a father figure, just a parent, just a loving adult who is happy to provide care for the children under your purview, please take that as my personal suggestion on a way to kind of buck the system and go old school and and take it upon yourself to do. What about this? What about trans parents or same-sex parents who adopt what about the day that they officially adopt their child why don't that be their day that they they could celebrate parents day because that is that is the day they became parents i think honestly that's not a bad idea that is a day to be celebrated but i think that it would be easier on on a day for solidarity like specifically like now this is pride month and Black History Month is when Black History Month is, or Juneteenth is, you know, these specific days. I think if there is already a day established for parents, and you want to do it that way, rather than if you adopt it on the 15th of June, or the 13th of February, or the 19th of March, then, you know, you're celebrating Parents' Day on all these different points of times. But for solidarity and visibility, if you as a group want to choose a day that already exists, is already on the calendar, is already recognized nationally, no matter how little it's celebrated, as a day for parents, I think for solidarity's sake, that may be the wiser decision. But honestly, the day that a child becomes a part of your life permanently, that's definitely a day to celebrate. But I think as far as like a nationally recognizable day of, of recognizing you as a parent, doing Parents' Day just seems to me and my limited experience in life to be the better idea for solidarity in your community. True. Because honestly, solidarity and visibility have become the greatest tools that we have to not feel so marginalized and to not feel so invisible as individuals. Now, as far as like adoptive parents, as, as far as like father figures, as far as trans parents, as far as gay parents, as far as like step parents or people who have married into a situation like that, if you are, even if you're not really that person's parent at all, if you're just, you know, the guy who makes sure the kid gets home safely and eats dinner, and you just happen to be the neighbor across the street, plenty of people are surprised with cards or gifts. Because they think that the, the, the bit that they contribute, which as far as they're concerned is the bare minimum, is actually more than enough for you to be a stable, staple figure in this child's life, for you to be recognized and celebrated because you are making a huge difference. Exactly. I tell people all the time, like, just because you may have given birth to a child that doesn't necessarily make you their child's parent. You may never touch that child. You may never connect to that child. You may never anything. There is a lot of evil people in this world who hold on to children that they don't even love or care for because they don't want nobody else to have them. 
me as a person who has had two miscarriages, who it may never have kids in ever in life, I cherish my god babies. I cherish a lot of kids. And I make sure I influence them so much. And the thing is, every year, my god babies, it never fail. They call me on Mother's Day or they send me a, the the my um best friend who's the mother of them will send me a message saying happy mother's day to me and she tags me into things because she knows at the end of the day by society's eyes because i've had two miscarriages i am not legally a mother but i have a lot of mother instincts i have done a lot for the community when it comes to kids i have nurtured a lot of kids hell there was a moment i was sitting here helping you with (laughs) with your youngest Right. And I mean, like, that doesn't necessarily make me less of a mom. And there was a moment where I had to get myself out of that thought when I did go to a fertility clinic a few years back. And they told me I may never naturally have a kid or I'll be high risking tubal pregnancy, which would be ter- anybody who knows what tubal pregnancy is. Most of those get terminated. Not by choice, because it's a it's a risk health uh, for the mother. I'm at that point, I'm, I'm, if I get pregnant naturally, I'm risking a tubal pregnancy. So there was a moment in time where I felt less of a woman and felt like, what is the purpose of living? Because society made me believe that as a woman, I am meant to breed. Because that is still a stigma that is on women. Even if I am pansexual, even if, you know, I'm, I'm more, when I'm dating females, I'm more of the male in the relationship. That doesn't make me feel any better that I may never have kids. It made me question for the longest. It's not just you. It is. It's definitely not just you. In the trans community, there's a lot of... Okay, when you're talking about legal rights, if you, as a woman, fall in love with another woman and you all have kids. Either she had kids from a previous relationship and the dad is a total deadbeat. Wants nothing to do with those kids. Sends you text messages like, why didn't you abort that little accident? Whatever the case is, dude can be a real piece of shit. But he will still have more rights than the woman you are with that is helping you to raise that child, that takes care of that child when they're sick, that takes them to school every morning, that change their diapers. That man who has no intention of being a positive force in that child's life, has no intention of being in that child's life at all, will have more legal rights and more legal claim to that kid. That person can be a, can be a registered sex offender, a pedophile, a murderer, a, a rapist. It does not matter because as far as the law is concerned, he is on better footing and a better choice and a better candidate to care for that child than you are as the person who's providing for them. So when it comes to legal rights, that is to say nothing of ethics. It's to say nothing of established presence. And there are plenty of trans people that are in a position where they know that. They know that the law is slanted against them. So there are trans women that are that are transitioning from female to male, and they are willing to risk even more dysmorphia so that they can become pregnant, carry a child to term before they get their transitional surgery, just so they have a biological claim to the child they're going to raise yep. with their partner. Correct. They are, they are willing to deal with the depression, with the dysmorphia, with the physical discomfort, with all of the, oh, ma'am, this, and ma'am, that, and excuse me, miss, and all of these other triggers. They're willing to suffer those slings and arrows just for the opportunity to actually carry a child that they can have legal claim to so they're not taken away from them or so the courts don't have something to leverage against them. And that's how serious it is for people to be the type of parent they want to be. Mm-hmm. And those people who go through that, just think of the PTSD they have to go through. Being called the wrong pronoun. Being scrutinized because they have to wait 
to transition completely to carry a child to term, have to deal with the question of look at these photos because they don't get to do those whole maternity float like before photos and all that other stuff. Or if they do and then turn around and now they're a man and the child only saw them as a man their entire life, but randomly look at photos of them pregnant and say, wait a minute, who's this female? There is a lot of blurred lines that people have to face. A lot of issues that these people have to go through. Transgenders have to go through to just go, just to live a normal life. What they want to have as a normal life. Same as black people, same as Native Americans, same as anybody that has to struggle to fight for any equality of just a normal life. And what they consider a normal life may not be what we consider normal. And that's just what people need to understand is that we need to understand that your idea of normal and my idea of normal is totally opposite. So let's agree to disagree and not and stay in our own fucking lane. They already have to go through a lot. As a black woman, I have a lot of shit I already got to go through. As a black pansexual woman who is a witch, I go through a lot of shit. Do you know how many people have turned me down dating me? Because the moment I sit here and say I'm not Christian, instantly everybody in the black community is like, no, I can't touch you. I literally have black men won't turn me down the moment I tell them I'm a witch. Because, you know, we have a bad PR. The moment I tell people, especially black females who are lesbians, that I'm pansexual, oh, you're just confused. No, baby, I'm not confused. I've been pansexual for over a decade. That does not make me confused. Me being demisexual definitely gives a lot of guys a whole, oh, she's just a challenge. No, sweetheart. The reason I say what I say is because I know what my normal is. It may not be normal to you, but this is my normal. And I'm not going to change my normal for nobody. I am ready to deal with the scrutinization. I'm ready to to deal with the rejection. I'm ready to deal with the people who are going to bash me, the PTSD. Because best believe the shit that I deal with because of the labels I have is nothing compared to what I grew up with. The spiritual, the emotional, the physical, the mental abuse has nothing to do with everything else that's going on. I can deal with this all day. This is a fucking cakewalk. Literally. Oh, you, you're a witch. I can't deal with you. Okay, deuces. Because at the end of the day, somebody is going to appreciate. They, for a, a thousand no's, I'm going to get a hundred yeses. They may not all come at once, but they're going to come. And I'm happy with the lifestyle that I chose. And I'm not going to change how I feel or how I love or who I love for anybody. If I was to fall in love with a transgender male or female today, I'm going to love them for them for being their honest self. And I'm going to support and build them. That doesn't make them less of a man because they wasn't born a man. Doesn't make them less of a woman because they wasn't born a woman. They're 100% true than themselves. And just like everybody else, whether you are normal and society's eyes or normal in your eyes that's all that matters and to be a parent to be a parent I could be a parent to somebody who is older than me that does not make me not a parent because sometimes people just need guidance I see her and make the joke and I think Jasmine does too my photographer make the joke that she's mama because at the end of the day she don't have kids of her own but there's a lot of people she helped raise she helped get out of bad situations and help better. So I look at it this way. It doesn't matter your gender. And I agree with Zeb 100%. It does not matter your gender. Your parent, if you are doing the right thing for your child and their well-being. Some people have to go through more struggles to be a parent. That does not make them less of a parent. It doesn't make them more of a parent. Because like I said, there is plenty of people out in the world who have given birth to kids and they don't do shit for them. The reason people are so applauded when they are single parents is that there is an expression and 
the expression is it takes a village. It does. I and agree 100%. That, that's, I mean, that it, it's a truism, but here's the problem. If it takes a village to raise a child, and the people in that village are against you as a parent, and against your child because they're a product of you, then that same community that's supposed to help teach them, give them wisdom, kindness, support, supposed to help them grow into the person that they're supposed to be, if they're the ones throwing stones and spitting at their feet, that community's not there to help you. And that's the problem with having normal. Normal is the average. Normal is the 2.5 children and the picket fence. Normal is the nuclear American dream. By 20, mind you, there's a certain age, too, for the normal. And and that dream often does not include those in the trans community. That dream often does not can, can include those in the gay community or the LGBTQIA community at large. Because those, those who are asexual, oh, how are you going to be a parent? You don't even have sex. You don't even want to have babies. You're just denying your abilities as, as a person, as a woman, or as a man to get someone pregnant. You're just wasting your potential. That don't mean nothing. I know plenty of straight women who don't want, who are sex positive. They love having sex, but they don't want kids. They don't ever want to have children, ever, ever. I know yeah, plenty so of people who want kids, but they don't want to carry kids. I know people who want kids who can't have kids. You don't know that person's situation. And it's one of those things that even with asexuals, we talked about this last episode. Asexual does not mean they don't have sex. Because technically me being demisexual, I, I'm still on the spectrum of asexuality. But it doesn't mean I don't have sex. I just go long periods without it. But that's that's the problem. The problem isn't whether or not the belief applies to you is that the belief exists about the group that you're a part of that is marginalized mm -hmm. and that's where that's where the stigma comes in because they're looking at a group versus the individuality every person is different we all may be under the spectrum of asexuality but each person is still different that is just it but that's the problem it challenges okay it challenges your belief system when you have to know somebody on an individual basis. A couple of days ago, I was answering a question for a white friend of mine. And they said, man, you know, I'm so glad that you're cool about this sort of stuff. Like, all these other black people get so uptight, man. Like, you're, you're, you're really good. You're a really good one. You're a really good guy. And what he did not realize he was saying is that I'm one of the good black. Because I don't get offended, or I don't get upset, or I don't get emotionally drained when you're asking me questions about my blackness, or I don't respond in a hostile way. So saying I'm one of the good ones is honestly like when a white person thinks that all black people are ignorant, rap-loving, rapist savages, except you. Oh, you're one of the good ones. You know your place in society. And that's the problem. The problem is that when you establish a belief system, you don't want to know a person on an individual basis. You don't want to know a person's individual struggle. You don't want to know that person's individual experiences because you may have to challenge your own beliefs. You may have to actually leave those beliefs behind. And sometimes if those beliefs are the same beliefs as your parents, who wants to look at their parent as being wrong? Who wants to look at their parent as being evil or a bigot or a racist or a homophobe or a misogynist? Nobody. You don't want to think that about your parents. You don't want to think that about your grandparents. You don't want to think that about your cool uncle or your cool aunt. You don't want to think that about the cousins that you played with when you were young. And so you would rather live in ignorance and generalize about a group of people then educate yourself or build individual relationships to challenge those ideas and that's what a society is it is a group of people 
that believe in a set standard of ideas, and that standard governs how they interact with one another. And the belief is, how are two men, how are two men, since they're obviously weak, going to teach a boy how to be a real man? How are two women going to teach a boy to be a man either? They don't know nothing about being no man. If those two guys have a girl, she's going to be confused. If two women raise a girl, she's obviously going to be a lesbian because she'll think she won't need no man in her life. And that's the issue. The issue is you have these generalities that you put out there and you don't want to know better. You don't want to do better. Because it means that you have to challenge this idea. And if you're the one who created that idea, a lot of people just simply don't want to be wrong. And if that leads to people being killed or denied rights or, or eluding legal precedent that would put them on equal footing, people are 100% fine with it as long as they get to be right. And as wrong as that is and as hurtful as that is and as toxic as that is for a society, to have a belief that marginalizes or hurts or discounts other people when it comes to gay parents, when it comes to LGBTQ parents in general. There are all of these stigmas that will keep you from being a loving parent to a child if you are trying to adopt, that will keep you from being a parent to and loving a child if that child is a product of another marriage or the product of a pregnancy that happened when you were not a part of that that relationship and whether you can be in that child's life and be the father figure or the mother figure you may not still enjoy the same rights and protections you may go to take that child to a hospital and thanks to the recent laws you may be denied treatment now luckily the Supreme Court kind of turned things around and that's a conversation for another day but in general, the law is not smiling on you because as far as they're concerned, they are operating with a lot of old ideals. And a lot of those old ideals say that if you are a man and you want to be anything other than a cis, hetero, straight male, and if you are a woman and want to be anything other than a cis, hetero, straight woman, you are mentally ill. Now, granted, they, they've changed the definition of gay from being a mental illness some time ago, but that's it wasn't, the it definition wasn't, that your parents grew up with. It wasn't, that's the definition that your grandparents grew up with. And the thing is, though, that's something that hasn't changed as, like, in the last 50 years. This is something that is still new, just like, you know, everything else in life that people are just not opening their eyes to. We are going to constantly, 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 constantly fight what people believe or what they were programmed to believe. The thing is, people think it's so hard to just let people live their fucking life unjudgmental. It is so fucking, it is just, it is just too much. In order for us to fight for quote unquote, and I'm going to really hit it hard with these people who did the all lives matter, is if all lives matter and if all people are equal, why are we still fighting for equality? Why are we still having the lines drawn for what is a good parent, what it makes a good father, what makes a good mother? Is that person taking care of the child? Are they giving them food? Is their clothes off their back? Like they're giving clothes off their like giving them clothes to these kids that they're not sitting here wearing holy clothes out and they're getting fed every day. They're not malnutrition. Like it's just we've been fighting for equality for people who are in the LBGDC community as well as those who are black and those who have all these things stacked up against them. We've been fighting for what people want to end up believing is right. The only thing that is right is let those people live their lives. They're not hurting nobody. But they are. And I mean, it's they're hurting. Hurt, they're hurting my hetero Christian ideals. And that's just it. 
most of these people who are quote unquote Christians are false Christians anyway, because if you look at the original statement of the Bible, you're not supposed to cast judgment and your ass is casting judgment. So guess what? Well, it's gonna... not me casting judgment. It's the scripture. See, let me just quote to you this one. Oh, nope, no, nope. no. Let's, let's, let's not. <laughs> let's not. And most of the stuff, and the thing is, like, people follow. People are sheep. They are. People don't have their own ideas, their own thoughts. They don't do their research. They just go with what they were raised to believe. They don't question things. I grew up questioning things. Even to this day, I question things. And I don't let people make me feel bad about it. Oh, if, see, you're a troublemaker and oh, a rabble rouser and you're out here to yep. mislead all these other people because you have a voice and people are going to listen to you. And thanks to you, they're all going to burn in hell now. So well, thanks I will, for ruining everyone's well, life. Well, I'm already going to burn in hell as a woman because I decided to wear pants. So it's okay. <laughs> and I and mean... selfish. And I am selfish because I am not procreating because... Oh, no, no, no. I said and eat shellfish. Oh, yeah, that too. And the fact of being I'm a woman and I, don't ha- I haven't birthed a bunch of babies yet. And I like to work and bring home my own bacon and cook it. So I'm going to hell. It's all right. Obviously. People don't understand if you live by the Bible, as much as the Bible has changed, you are not really living life because every time a new edition comes out, now you got to change the way you live again because they change it based off of what is beneficial for the people who are writing it. No, are you? No, they wouldn't do that. It's the word of God. Why would someone go around changing? Oh, that? because apparently the word of God, somebody woke up one morning because they had a dream because they got heartbroken by another man and they were born men. Originally, it was okay for men to marry other men, but now all of a sudden he got heartbroken and now he's seeing all these other people together and he is forced to marry a woman because no man wants him. Now he has to change the Bible. Oh, God came to me today and said that gay marriage is bad because I got heartbroken and nobody needs to know I was heartbroken. But that's what God told me that it's no longer allowed for two men to be married. Right. Um, for those of you who are unaware, this is, this is not a matter of Christian bashing. There are literally new additions of the Bible. So if you go get your grandma or your great grandma's Bible, and you have the time since we're in, you know, we're still trying to socially distance. To just go line by line. There are certain scriptures in the Bible which is supposed to be the immutable, unchangeable, unshakable, certified, stamped, 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes version of of the the King James text. And if you look at it, a Bible printed this year, and a Bible printed that your grandma has, a lot of the scriptures are different. They are. They've literally taken words out, put words in, and you can blame PC culture. You can say it's all in a matter of making things politically correct, or you can try to say that it's people making the Bible more woke. But it's real funny how Shakespeare in all this time hasn't changed a single goddamn soliloquy, but the Bible itself somehow keeps getting an update every year the King James Version is reprinted. Like a whole new upgraded phone. Like that note that you just got and you now the now just like the Bible. And I'm not bashing Christians. I've met a lot of wonderful Christians. I have no I have no problems with them. There is a lot of open minded people, but there is a lot of sheeple who follow the Bible to the T or their version of the Bible to the T. And there's a lot of people who perverse religion for their own beneficial gain. So I don't bash Christianity by no means. I was raised Christian, but like I said, I question everything because there isn't a black and white. There isn't a A or B. There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G in in everything in life. And it's just about what are you, what is your destiny? What sits right with you? Like for me, when I have kids, I'm not going to tell my child that, yeah, because you're a female, you need to do female things. You need to do this. 
you need to do that. If my child grows up, I'm not going to tell them, hey, because your mother is a witch, you need to be a witch. And honestly, there's a lot of things that Christians do that is actually comes from pagan religion that Christianity perverts to change it. So a lot of the things like blowing out your candles on your birth on your birthday, it's still your pagan your, tradition. It's 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 a pagan tra- tradition. For us, blowing out the candles is blowing away bad spirits and bad energy into the new year. And another like circle around. Got in your living room, same deal. Exactly. Everything for you to be a true Christian, and I mean honestly, you might as well be a Jehovah Witness. They're the only ones who completely remove pagan rituals well the Amish that too and the Amish that truly get rid of pagan traditions out of it nobody in their right mind is Christian to the fullest because at some point in time a lot of people study astrology that is technically a form of witchcraft if you go on your sign nobody here is a true Christian Unless you full blown bashing people and those people who are at the picket signs talking about everybody's going to hell, um, I will see y'all there. It's cool. It's all right. We'll be singing Kumbaya together. And I'll be like, dang, at least I knew I was coming. What about you? Did you know you were coming because you were casting judgment outside the clubs telling us how we can't be drinking and smoking and the second cra- time of Christ is coming and you were at, and you were in Sin City, you were looking at the girls walk around, the go go dancers and telling them how they're going to hell. No good well, yo, funny. your perverse mind was going on. <laughs> it's real funny. Like, you're like, oh, you know, you can't drink and can't smoke, and they are smoking in the Bible. And you're telling me not to drink right before you go to church to have communion. So enjoy that body of Christ and uh, the blood of Christ that you're, you're about to sup down while you're reading your I Pray 7 and everyone else is reading their I Pray 10. But be that as it may... <laughs> All of, all of the religion in the world, all of the tradition in the world, all of the ideals in the world, they don't work they don't. when you're trying your best to live a moral life. Because what feels moral, as opposed to you following directions that someone gave you, it, it, it can only lead you astray. There was a point in time when GPS would tell you, turn left here, and people were so blindly following what someone else had to say that these people were driving off of bridges backing up into lakes doing all sorts of stupid things driving the wrong way in oncoming traffic because the computer told them to they weren't using their own heart as a guide they weren't using their previous experience they weren't taking the parts of christianity that are about love and acceptance and about you know doing right by people and giving everyone the benefit of the doubt and just none of that none of that the whole Mary Magdalene deal just right out the fucking window. And the thing is, I'm not just harping on or talking about Christians in general. As a matter of fact, I don't particularly have an issue with Christians unless you are a zealot. In which case, please keep all of that enthusiastic energy to yourself. Oh, and you I'm can stay you, over here and mind my business. You can but keep that can, shit in the house in the apartment across the fucking side of town for all I care. I I just that's how I feel. I am non judgmental right. as a witch. I am very positive, good energy, good vibes, but they know how to tear the room down. I want people to live their best free life. Are you happy with the life you chose? Are you morally going the way you want to? Because honestly, I feel as a person, as a person who has God children, who is part of the LGBT community, and who is African American, who grew up in a very structured Christian, Baptist, Roman Catholic household, with my mom's Roman Catholic, my dad was Baptist, household. And even then, the them as, as religious as they were, they were not traditionally the ideal versions of what they want in the Bible, painted it picture. That is the same way with people who are transgendered and they're being parents. Their parents could have been the textbook Pleasantville parent and they still grew up to be that way. And that's the same with transgender parents. Just because they are not born male or born female, it is not make them less of a parent. 
It doesn't make them less of anything. They, oh, they didn't have their child raised up in the of the eyes of the Lord. Because believe me, I've heard that plenty of times being gothic. Oh, your child's a devil worshiper. Oh, the reason she decided to become pagan or she doesn't want to give things up to God is because, you know, she wasn't raised right. No, that does not mean my parents didn't do a good job raising me. Honestly, my parent, my... The one thing I can give my mom credit for, minus all the other bullshit that I went through, my mother, not my not my stepmother, not the woman who raised me, because there, again, there's a drawn line between a person who gave birth to you and a person who raised you. I tell people all the time, my mother, in a way, she raised me up until a certain point in my life, but the person who really raised me is my stepmother, and that's mama. That's mama. That's mama bear. All day, every day, no problems. And she's heavy Christian. She believes in praying to God and letting it go. And she always tells me, you should pray to God. And I tell her all the time, no. I went through too much shit in my life. I've went through too much to sit here and just let that shit go. I've gone through so much. And I'm saying from the standpoint of a person who has PTSD, who came from an abusive background, Technically, the stigma is of a person who has been abused, a black woman who has been abused. They end up on the street. They end up prostitutes. They end up a lot of stuff. But there is a lot of women who are like me who come out of those situations and become something totally different. That is the same way with kids. You can raise your child in the best of situations, but your child turns around to be a criminal. You can raise your, you can have a one father, like born and bred, male father, female mother, and your child still come out to be gay. Or your child still comes out to be a mass murderer. Your child can come out to be whatever. It is not a matter of who raised you, what sexual orientation. That child is still going to grow up to be what they're going to be. Your job as a parent doesn't matter your gender, your sex, whatever, or if you're the neighbor next door or one of the people who helped raise you. Because I can tell you when my grandmother was alive, every time I was up in Chicago off of North Lotus Avenue near like on the west side, when I was at my grandma's house, everybody on the block knew me. Miss Connie, my grandma, the neighbor lady next door who babysit all the bad, bad other babies and stuff. If I sat here and decided to go do something stupid, because I can't, I remember to this day, because right across the street from my grandmother's house was a church. Me and my cousin did something stupid. We were sitting here, we rolling up leaves and pretending to smoke them. I was, I was a bad child. I understand. I'm fully aware of it. I'm okay with it. Because my older cousin was doing it. And I sat here and had my younger cousin doing it with me. And I'm pretty sure she could testify to this. I remember my I remember Miss Connie saw me driving by the church. My grandmother caught me because Miss Connie told her, and my grandmother was a heavy in the church. She was one of those ladies. She was there early. Every day they had something. She was the one serving food. She had one of the gloves. Yeah, basically she was, she was there every Sunday. But that doesn't change how I grew up or how her kids grew up. The thing is, I remember... Not only did Miss Connie stay here and pull both me and my cousin off of the the that that um in front of that little church in front of us, I end up sitting in front of my grandmother. My grandmother's like, "I'm gonna whoop your ass." Then your daddy gonna whoop your ass. I got three whoopings that day because <laughs> it was my grandmother, my grandfather, and my daddy. It was not a pleasant day for me. Guess what? I still grew up to start smoking for a little while when I got older, but still, <laughs> that doesn't change nothing. The child is, it takes a village to raise a child. And the thing is, it doesn't matter about what you do. What is, what you have to do is teach your child right and wrong and be the guidance they need when they need it. You got to be your child's friend to a point. You got to be their therapist to a point. You have to be their guidance force. And if you are a single father out there doing it, handling it on your own, congratulations. You are doing what a parent is supposed to do. You deserve your celebration. For those single moms out there, you get your day too. Appreciate the days that you get. 
I feel like as a parent, if your child is successful, it should not matter if you get something on Mother's Day or Father's Day or what or Parents' Day. Your child is the greatest gift you can ever have. And for those parents out there who is in the same sex, who are transgendered, for those who can't naturally have kids, but they adopted children, you are still a parent. Don't let society tell you any differently because you were not born a man or if you are not physically a man, but you have basically taken the role as a fraternal figure and you are raising that child or if you are just the person who watched the children after school and you are watching them and help nurturing like nurturing their growth you in a way are still a parent to this child you may not physically have any like emotional or well you should have emotional tie if you're trying to help them but even if you may not have a physical tie to this child, like genetically, you being a parent is enough. And it doesn't, if they sit here and they call you mama or daddy, that is a gift enough. Do not let society dictate you being a parent. Because unconditionally, your child is going to love you unconditionally yes father's day father's day is a day mother's day is a day but you are still a parent 365 days a year until that child until you are in the grave because i would never want to say until that child's in the grave until you are in the grave because at the end of the day no parent wants to bury their child true so above all that your ability to parent can be obstructed by a great many things. So I just want to say two primary things. Thing number one, if your community is interfering in your ability to be a parent, if the other children in that community are talking shit to your kid. Because kids do um, be kids and they do bully and that just means it's, that their no, parents it's, are it's pieces of shit. Kids. kids can can be insensitive little assholes. And it's Whether their parents' to job to fucking right the wrong. That is it. The child doesn't know any better. But it's the parents' job to tell their child from right from wrong. And if they won't take that responsibility on themselves, please feel free to take that responsibility into your own hands. And I don't mean, like, him somebody else's kid up in a corner. But if they don't know any better, if they somehow think that your genitals or your gender or your partner or the household that child is growing up in is somehow contributing to them being less popular, them being less accepted, them being less of a man or woman, them being less in any metric feel free to let them know that your child is not lacking because they have someone in their life that loves them whether that person does or doesn't have a dick does or doesn't eat pussy does or doesn't wear a rainbow g-string and roll down the street on rollerblades with a mustache a hairy back and a blue or purple wig on it does not make you any more or any less and it does not make the child you're raising any more or any less i would argue if you had to pick whether it was greater than or less than a child that is receiving unabashed love from someone who is marginalized from someone who is consistently second guessed from someone who is persecuted on a regular basis and that person can still find a spot inside of their heart to provide love, to provide support, to provide understanding, to give a listening ear, that child is better off than anywhere else it could be. So if you feel sometimes like you don't have the spoons for it, that you're somehow failing because they're not masculine enough or they're not feminine enough or they don't like all of the stereotypically traditional things that you think will give them a harder time, fuck those things. 
Because at the end of the day, the people who stand out the most stand out for one or two reasons. Either they're very bad people or they're very good people. And if you're providing that child with love and positive attention instead of abuse and emotional neglect, I can almost guarantee they're going to end up on the good side of things. Unless they're a sociopath, in which case it's a coin flip. The second thing that I want to say is outside of your community, if your community is making it harder for you to be a parent, is the law. If the law, and when I say community, I mean neighbors, religious officials, whatever the case is. Oh, but the law, of if the law is making it harder for you to be a parent, as in blocking your legal rights, there are ways around certain things. If you know the parent of the child, sometimes you can get them to sign over their parental rights to your partner. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for money, if, if, if that's what it takes, which is fucking disgusting, but it's still something that can be done. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if they're not willing to sign over their parental rights, they can sign over guardianship to you. If none of those things, If you are given power of attorney, if you are given whatever legal precedent, if that child is sick and tired of having to deal with the fact that they have another parent who's intervening on the side of their religion or on the side of their relatives or on the side of traditional American values, then you can let that child get emancipated. Sign whatever paperwork. Take them to the right websites. Get them their goddamn freedom so they can treat you the way they want to treat you rather than having to operate in this cage. But there are a lot of legal precedents working on your behalf. There are a lot of laws being shut down, a lot of protections that certain orange people have tried to roll back that have been shut down. And we can definitely dive a little bit more on that on Tuesday when it comes to different legalities when it comes to to gay rights adoption and things of that nature absolutely Um, and we can do that we'll definitely we can dive a little bit more we can make that a whole live episode on tuesday talk about it and everything else like that because honestly at the end of the day when you dive into the legal legal aspect and a lot of things that gay people they may quote unquote think they have equal rights on there's still a lot of things that are not recognized. And on we, a state and a federal level. On a state, federal, national, worldwide scale. And we can dive a little bit more on that on Tuesday, especially when it comes to adoption, rights, proper pronouns, things of that nature. We can talk about it all on Tuesday. With that being said, before we dive into that, and before we get lost into into translation, <laughs> I say I want to end the show today's episode with this. If you, as a person, as a human being, even if you don't identify as a human being, because I know there's a few of y'all out there, if you have a child. And you are raising that child. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation. If you are providing for this child, nourishing this child, even if it's the bare fucking minimum, do not let society tell you or dictate whether or not you are more of a father or less than a father because of your gender your sexual orientation, or even if you are a a father trying to fight for rights and custodies of your child because you got a bitter bitch baby mama, that does not make you less than a father or more than a father. You going out and beyond for this child is enough. If you are just a person who are watching the children after school and helping grow them, those teachers out there, you were ba- those kids are basically your kids too because you are helping nourishing them and their growth. 
and helping them on the path of right and wrong. For those out there who are struggling to figure out if they are considered a father because of their sexual orientation or if they were born originally a female gone to male, baby doll, honey, you are a father. Do not let society tell you any differently. You are taking care of a child that is your own, whether it's by adoption, by blood, from step being a step parent, to every father out there, happy Father's Day, to every parent out there who is taking care of their child unconditionally. For every teacher out there helping, thank you all for being the best parent because guess what? It takes a village to raise kids. Zeb, you have anything? Honestly, I concur wholeheartedly. Keep serving in whatever capacity, whether you identify as male, whether you are gender neutral, gender fluid, whatever you identify as, keep serving, nurturing, supportive, masculine energy into these children's lives. It doesn't matter what gender they are. You are needed. You are valid. You are important more than you have any idea. And as someone who has struggled, your wisdom and your support are going to mean so much more than you think. So whatever the struggle is, however hard it may be to be the parent that you're trying to be to a child, keep going. Keep trying. Keep putting yourself out there. Even if your kid doesn't want to hear it. Keep going. And at the end of the day, you are going to be recognized, whether it's by them or the other people that see the good that you're doing in their life. So, happy Father's Day to everyone serving up that masculine energy. Again, from your friendly neighborhood witch, apparently with my agendas (laughs) and my rebellion... (laughs) I wish you guys many blessings. I want to let you remind you that self-love is the best love. Self-care is the best care. And it is okay to not be okay. I want to shamelessly give my social medias out again. If you guys ever want to reach out to me personally, have any updates on any of the shows, um, you can follow me on lady underscore I-E-R-E-I-K-O for IG. And for Twitter, the handle is at B underscore R-E-I-K-O. And I do have a Discord, which I share the link on Twitter constantly. Um, Model Reiku Blackheart is my social media page. I get messages through there always. If you guys ever want to talk, share energy, just, and get good vibes and blessings, I am always here because guess what? We are all on this path of self-discovery together and self-healing together. Stay hydrated and we'll catch you for a live segment on Tuesday. And as well as next week, the next Sunday's live episode. I love you guys. Stay blessed and protected.